Hi, I'm Matt Williams from Winemakers Academy, and tonight is part three of our kit winemaking video series. Um, we're preparing to do a stabilization and clarifying of the wine if the specific gravity is in the right range. And checking our instructions, it needs to be at 0.996 or below. So to get started, we're going to remove our airlock here, uh, being careful not to get any of the the liquid there back into the wine. Uh, this has been unopened since it was racked in part two. So we've kept the temperature fairly close to where it needs to be, perhaps a little bit on the cool side. So when that happens, it can prolong fermentation and you just have to wait longer for it to finish. And it can also take longer when we get to the degassing process. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started by removing the airlock. This is a very snug fit, so you want to go nice and slow and work out everything as gently as possible. And now that we've removed the airlock and gotten rid of the old water there, we're going to go ahead and pull out the plug and we'll get to our specific gravity test. And this is our uh, wine thief here that we'll use to get a sample from the wine. This particular wine thief was designed so that you can put the um, hydrometer directly into the wine thief. So tonight we'll be trying that method to see how that works for us. Previously we have checked the specific gravity using our test jar here. And now we'll take our sample. So we've got a point 0.92 specific gravity, which is less than our 0.996, so we can go ahead with our degassing and then our stabilization and clarifying. Part of the advantage to doing it this way is that if we've sanitized our wine thief properly, we don't have to completely remove the wine that we've taken here. We can leave it in our carboy without having to worry about contaminating it there. So that was the purpose of this particular wine thief being clear as it is. The next step is to take one half cup of cool water and we're going to dissolve into that packets three and four from our wine kit. Um, so packet three here is the potassium metabisulfate and then we're also going to add uh, packet four potassium sorbate. So we've got our packets three and four dissolved into the water here. We're going to add this to the carboy and then we need to vigorously stir it and degas it. Um, and specifically they also want us to stir up the sediment that's on the bottom of the carboy. To do this I've got two pieces of equipment that we're going to use today. First is this very long spoon. Now the actual spoon end of this does not fit into the carboy but the, uh, the paddle end will so that we can really reach down to the bottom. And then for degassing, I've got another tool, and this is a wine whip. Um, with this shape, it will rotate around inside the carboy and stir up everything. This plug will seat right where our airlock does. And this end of the uh, wine whip actually will attach to a drill so that we can really stir this very quickly. So without further ado, we'll get to adding this in and mixing it up. Now at first I'm going to stir just with this and in just a couple seconds I'll go ahead and get out the drill so that we can really mix this up. I wanted to make sure that we got the sediment off the bottom of the carboy here so let's go ahead and finish this out and we'll get the drill. So here we've got our drill, we've got our wine whip, we'll go ahead and drop this down in, get it seated. Now because we're going to use a power tool on this and it is plastic, we need to add some water into this cup. We have to fill it up about halfway and what this is going to do is keep everything cool so that we're not burning anything out. And that cup is a little dirty so we'll use this guy here. Okay, I've got my drill in, the wine whip is attached, water's in place and here we go.
For the next step, we're going to mix up our Cheetosin, which is a fining and clarifying agent here. They want you to stir it up a little bit, and then we're gonna pour it in here, and we'll do another two minutes of degassing. Okay, so after two minutes of degassing, you can see we got a lot of bubbles up in here. So we have released some carbon dioxide. One of the benefits to using a wine whip is that it doesn't introduce a lot of oxygen into the wine as it stirs the CO2 out. So it really is a good tool to have for doing this step here. Okay, for the last step, we're gonna make sure that we got enough CO2 out of our wine. And to do that, we're gonna take a sample of our wine, fill up the test jar halfway, and then we have to shake it by hand and see if it releases any pressure, which would be any additional CO2 that's coming out of the wine. So we'll take our sample now. So here we've got our wine sample in the thief, or in the test jar, excuse me, and we're gonna go ahead and shake this hand over top, and when I release my hand, if I feel any sort of pressure release, then I know there's still CO2 and we have to degas again. So we'll get a nice and tight seal. Okay, so I can hear pressure coming out of this, and that means that we need more time with the wine whip to degas this. And we kind of expected that because we said that the temperature was a little bit cooler than what it should be. So I'm gonna go ahead and degas that and I'll uh, see you again when that's over. Okay, so I finally got the wine degassed. Um, and let me tell you, don't do that unless you have a wine whip, uh, especially if you've had a cool, if you're at a cool temperature because you have to whip the wine more to degas it, the wine whip is a lifesaver. I had no idea until I gave that thing a spin. Um, so for the last, few steps here. What's left is to top up to within two inches of where our plug is going to be and then we'll reattach the, uh, the airlock there. Um, so when you're topping up there's really three options that you have. If you go by the kit instructions they want you to use cool water. If you go by other methodologies you can top up with uh, a similar wine, another Shiraz, and I've even heard of people using um, marbles. Uh, sanitized marbles, you put that in so that you're not diluting the wine at all. For this uh, video series here, we're going to go ahead and use water uh, just to keep to the instructions here. So I'm going to go ahead and top this up and then we'll put the airlock in. Okay, so we've got our airlock in. We're topped up to within two inches of the bottom of the plug and at this point, it's just a waiting game. We'll wait for 14 days and then we should be ready to bottle. Um, if anything didn't go right, we'll know because the wine won't clear. So if it doesn't get to a point where it looks like a nice finished clear wine, then we know that something was amiss. And if it is clear, you're free to go on to bottling. So thanks for watching this session. Um, we will be back with another session for bottling and if you would like more tips and videos on winemaking, please stop by winemakersacademy.com. And if you have any comments or questions, you can leave those in the comments in this post, or you can just email me at matt at winemakersacademy.com. We'll see you later.